I have discovered the secret of water perpetual motion. My device uses buoyancy and gravity as motive forces. Water perpetual motion is possible because it uses two different natural forces that act in opposing directions. Buoyancy drives the device upward one moment, while gravity pulls the device downward the next moment. Thus, a perpetual up and down motion is possible. In this video, I discuss one of the approaches to water perpetual motion that failed. You can learn from failures. You learn what does not work. Then you can try another approach that might work. Without going into details of operation, we have a wheel with four arms. At the end of each arm is a canister. Water can be pumped in and out of each canister. The wheel sits in a 10 foot deep tank of water. At positions A and B, the canisters are filled with water and fall downwards. At position C, the water in each canister is pumped out and replaced with air. The canisters at C and D are filled with air, are now lighter than water, and they float upward. At position A, the air in each canister is replaced by water, and the cycle is repeated. Buoyancy causes the canisters to rise, and gravity causes the canisters to sink. A variation to using rigid canisters is using rubber bladders. The bladders are empty when going down. At the bottom of the tank, each bladder is filled with air and rises. The bladders at D and C are filled with air and rotate upward. At the top position, the air is released and the bladder deflates. The hub is attached to a chain drive. The chain drive goes to an air compressor. As the wheel turns, the air compressor is operated. This forces air down a hose into the center hub where it is connected to each arm. The air to inflate the bladders goes down the arm into the bladder. Then the cycle is repeated. That is the theory of how the device would work. Unfortunately, in reality, neither the canister or bladder systems would work, at least not as perpetual motion machines. Whether you use a canister or a bladder, there is the same serious problem. To explain why the canister or the bladder systems will not work as a perpetual motion machine, Let's return to the rigid canister for the explanation. Using the rigid canister, it is easy, easier to visualize what is happening. It is the same basic problem for the rubber bladder. And at the bottom of the 10-foot water tank, the water pressure is 19 pounds a square inch. That means that the air being forced into the canister has to be at 20 pounds per square inch. Now this cylinder is eight inches long and six inches in diameter. A cylinder eight inches by six inches equals one gallon. Now it, now it can be either one gallon of water or it can be one gallon of air. Now the piston face is 28 square inches. The face can be either here or here, either side. Now 20 pounds per square inch times 28 square inches is 560 inch pounds. The eight inches that has to be driven down 
times the 560 equals 4,480 inch pounds. That's equal to 373 foot pounds of force. 373 foot pounds of force in total is required to drive the piston down to the bottom of the cylinder and drive out all the water so it can be replaced by air and then rotate upwards. Now each canister equals one gallon of air. One gallon of air equals eight foot-pounds of buoyancy force. The eight foot-pounds of buoyancy force times ten feet, the height of the tank, equals eighty foot-pounds. That's how much you get from the rotation of each air-filled canister. On the other side are water-filled canisters. Now they don't deliver much force when they're water filled because the, the water in the canister is equal to the water uh, force outside. So it's only the difference between the water force outside and the water inside the canister is the wall of the canister, which would, we're, in this example, we're using a very lightweight plastic, uh, say it would weigh one pound for the entire canister. It's only about one pound of gravity force going down and 80 pounds of buoyancy force going up. Now it took 373 foot-pounds to fill the canister with air. So we have a serious problem here. Each canister is giving us only 80 foot-pounds of energy going up, but it takes, at this bottom position, it takes 373 foot-pounds to fill the canister with air. The amount of energy needed to fill the canister with air is nowhere close to the amount of energy gained in the upward rotation of the canister. So this approach fails as a perpetual motion machine. Any perpetual motion machine using an air compressor to inflate a bladder or fill a canister with air will fail. Pictures of such devices you see in books or in videos are pure works of fantasy and would never work in real life.